Gail Shelby with OM Performance Marketers here. Today I am talking about the Facebook Conversions API, what it is, what it does, and how to get it set up. Uh, this is something that's fairly new to the Facebook uh, network, really. It hasn't been around for too long, maybe just a few months or so. Uh, it was designed by Facebook as an answer in part to iOS 14. A lot of people were seeing a lot of data being lost due to the tracking issues. Uh, and so this was designed to create that direct connection between your marketing data on your servers and the Facebook systems. And this can help optimize your ad targeting, decrease your cost per action, and help you measure results across all the meta technologies. So how it works, um, this is a really nice graphic that I got from WordStream from one of their articles. So make sure to check them out. It was a really good article. Uh, helped me understand this a whole lot better. So the API really, it's just a server that is built on your system. So you'll, you'll create actually a server either on your host service. Um, they recommend doing it on AWS. Um, and that actually is really the only setup from what I was able to see when I was creating this. I, they, they do it through a couple other things you can do through your CRM. I know HubSpot has a beta connection. Uh, there might be a couple other ones in the works. I do not know of them myself, but feel free to look them up. I'm sure there will be more and more information as this process goes on. But with the API being on your server, it creates a direct, reliable connection between the marketing data from your server itself, from your website platform where the pixel lives or your CRM. And this goes over to Meta. So as you can see in this really nice graphic, you have your server over here, the Facebook conversions API connecting it over to Facebook server, and that passes information over to ads manager all the way over from your website and the website visitor who is um, you know, providing tra traffic to your website or completing a conversion action, whether that's a purchase or a lead event, something along those lines. But really um, the purpose of the server being there is it replaces the browser client side conversion tracking via cookies, which is on the way out. And instead, it uses server side conversion tracking and passes that over in a more reliable way to the Facebook server. The benefits of the conversions API, of course, is improving your data matching and then improving your optimization by proxy. So you'll be able to better uh, improve your measurement, which can allow you to optimize ads for actions that happen later in the customer's journey. This in turn reduces the cost per action due to increased event matching. This is something that we saw in some of our e-commerce clients where a lot of them were uh, seeing a really, really high cost per action. We weren't seeing a lot of attributed purchases or lead events from Facebook because of the loss of data from iOS 14. And it also helps increase your data control. So when using the API with Metapixel, this is really how you should be doing it. That's best practice. It helps maximize the effectiveness of website events. These events are sent through the conversions API and like that graphic showed are linked to the pixel and behave like events sent through the pixel in these following ways. So first off, it's used for the same types as ad optimization. They do appear in most of the same platforms like ads manager and events managers. They still obey the same restrictions in Meta's business tool terms, and they do not directly bypass the data sharing policies or privacy rules set out in things like iOS app tracking transparency, as well as Europe's e-privacy directive. Couple other best practices I wanna call out before I go into the how-to. Um, this will be from my experience set up by default. It's setting up some redundant steps. So it just deduplicates anything. Um, Cause you could assume, oh, I'm sending events from uh, the conversions API, but they're also getting sent through the Metapixel. So what the, isn't that gonna cause a problem? Am I gonna be seeing duplicate events? But Facebook is really cool the way that it's doing it. It's able to take a look on both sides of the pixel and on the conversions API. And it just dedupes them when it recognizes that they're the same thing, which um, in the actual setup, you'll be able to see just about where those events are coming from. And as far as like what percentage is being deduped from each source. So the higher that number is, the better. Then in your event match quality, um, this will be another thing that comes out of the conversions API gateway. Uh, you wanna aim for an event quality match or event match quality score, sorry, of 6.0 or higher. And you can review that in the events manager after setting up the API. And then again, uh, there's a couple other measurements. You want your events to be shared in real time or as close to real time as possible. Some of them will get pushed back to, um, I've seen like the, the different brackets are about like one to something hours all the way up to 24 hours. And then occasionally they're not coming in often enough. So it doesn't know, it'll say unknown as far as like how long it's taking for these events to come over. And then, of course, just make sure you're continuing to monitor your connection regularly after setup. Just like any other event tracking, you should be checking it fairly often, maybe once a month or so, and just making sure nothing's broken. So then how to set it up. There are several setup methods available. 
Uh, you can do some direct connections if you or your client are on a commerce platform like Shopify, WooCommerce, or something like this. Um, so those are direct integrations. There's the Conversions API Gateway, which is what I'm going to go through today. There are also some other partner integrations. Um, it looks like you can do it through GTM. I haven't looked into this too much. Telium. And then HubSpot also has a beta connection. I have not checked on this in about a month or so. It might be out of beta, but I can't say for sure. So definitely, um, if you're watching this video a while in the future or you're even watching it right now, make sure that you're taking a look at this and seeing if anything has changed. Um, and then lastly, this is probably the most difficult way to do it, but you can also do a direct integration via code. So then in the requirements, what you're going to need, you're going to need your Metapixel ID. You're going to need access to Events Manager, um, specifically, sorry, admin access. You're going to need access to your website domains. So um, that would be like an AWS or a host dime or something like that. You would also need DNS provider access through GoDaddy or whatever you have bought your DNS through. And then you're also going to need cloud provider admin access. And they do mention that they prefer AWS. Um, that seems to be, at least when I was getting this set up previously, the only way to do it currently. Um, I have not confirmed whether you need to have AWS as your cloud domain provider in general, or if you can create a new account for yourself uh, and just use it for this purpose. That is not something I've been able to look into. Um, so definitely in the comments, let us know if that's something that you've run into. If you know, would really love to hear from y'all. So for the setup, there is a six step guide to completion that's provided by Facebook. Um, I'll put a link to the setup guide in the video, but feel free to also look it up for yourself. It's really easy to follow along, but it likely re requires dev support either from you or from the client. One thing I share this with my team, I had a bit of a hiccup in the process. In step five of their guide, Facebook says to check that events are coming through. Um, events will actually not come through until you launch the gateway in step six. So first you have to complete step six and then you can actually see if the setup was correct. So I waited about a month and didn't see anything come through. And then we happened to just go ahead and try step six and events started coming through immediately. And I felt a little goofy. So make sure you do that. Also make sure you read the resources. If you are working with a client or needing to get buy-in from a team member, get a good understanding of the how and why before meeting and just make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, obviously it seems simple, but it's really good practice. So this is all available in the link that will be in the description box. But um, first off, just getting started, you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna go to your events manager settings tab. And from there, you're gonna scroll to set up uh, conversions API gateway and click get started. You're gonna want to choose the domains that you're gonna connect and enable automatic event, uh, automatic advanced matching Facebook will auto-populate a subdomain. It's just going to show up here. It'll be some string of letters and numbers dot your domain dot com. And that's going to become the endpoint where you're going to actually go in your URL bar uh, to access the UI after setup is complete. So um, for me, I just changed it to conversions because it was like conversions dot domain dot com, which was very easy to remember for me. I can get back to it anytime I need rather than some random string of letters and numbers. Uh, I just didn't want to deal with that. I was never going to remember it. So whatever you want, I chose conversions, but whatever works for you. Then you'll get a couple of different options. If you're following the AWS setup, you're going to choose deploy to AWS and then select the correct hosting region for the AWS account. So if you already have an account set up, just check and see where your region is. Uh, and I would recommend choosing the same one. So for my client that I set this up for, I believe it was North Virginia, if I'm remembering correctly, it was somewhere around there. So just take a look at that before you get um, any further. If you have AWS access, click begin deployment to open AWS. But if you're working with a dev or a client or somebody who just hasn't shared access with you, click copy URL and send it over to them. So then in step two, you're going to want to log into AWS. Um, they will offer a quick creation flow for the gateway stack. And then that will have several pre-populated fields. Facebook stated that you should not change any of these aside from the stack name, uh, which I believe you can just give any name that makes sense to you. You will go ahead and complete any remaining fields, give it an admin email and an admin password, ad, <laughs> admin password, and these will be used to access the gateway UI. That's just like what you're going to be logging in with. Um, in most instances, you can use t, t3.large for your instance type. 
I believe when we did it, we actually didn't have that as an option. So we used, I think, a medium. Um, but anything will work along these lines. Um, then you'll click Create Stack to begin the installation, which can take about five minutes or so. And you'll know when it says it's done or when it's done by when it says Create Complete in the Stack Info tab. After that, you'll go to the Outputs tab and you'll want to copy and make some sort of reference of the IP that's under call to action, as well as the conversions API gateway instance URL, which is what you set up before, um, where I said conversions.domain.com. So then you'll want to set up your DNS. This is where things get a little hairy because it depends by DNS. Um, in most cases, you can just go to your DNS, you can log in, add the IP address that was generated under call to action as an A name record for the subdomain you're using. And then you will add the subdomain you've defined as your conversion API gateway endpoint and save your configuration. Might be a couple other things you have to do in there. I know there's um, like TTS is what it's called, time to serve or something along those lines. I apologize if I'm getting that completely wrong. Um, but that will be where you want to go and get things set up. And then once that's done, you'll move on to step four. Once you have that URL, you'll just go to it and a new web page will appear titled conversions API gateway is provisioning. Uh, this URL is indicating that the Conversions API Gateway is being installed. It takes about 15 minutes or so, and then it'll be accessible. You will get the message provisioning finished once setup is complete, and then you can move on to the next step. This is step five. This is where I had that little hiccup that I was talking about earlier in my mistakes. So you're going to want to access the admin UI, log in using admin email and password that you set up earlier, log in and the server and browser data may at first be at zero. This info, like it says here, can take five minutes to two hours to populate. So rather than sit here and wait for your data to never populate, you'll go to step six. Return to the events manager to complete the next steps. Click next from where you'd left off. Confirm the DNS record is added successfully and click next. And then you'll check if the launch button shows. If it does, setup's complete. You can go ahead and finish it. Um, if it's not working, it says here that the console may take up to 30 minutes to be available. So retry the link if it doesn't work right away and then click finish to complete the process. And then you can go back to step five, um, check if data is being collected, making sure that your server and browser data is going up. And if at that point you don't have any issues, uh, you're good. And if you do, contact Facebook. And that's it. Um, they do have some videos going very directly in depth and showing you exactly how to do it step by step in the link that we'll share that came from Facebook. But if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, can't promise we're going to be able to help with everything, especially as this changes, but more than happy to help as we're able to. All right. Thanks, y'all. Take care. Bye.